Hi everyone, welcome to Spill the Tea Radio, where we interview awesome singers, songwriters, and those who influence their lives. Spill the Tea Radio explores the journey, creativity, and inspiration behind the songs. My next guest is an award-winning jazz singer-songwriter. He has attracted a dedicated and growing audience, both in his native Toronto and globally. He brings a wry and agile sense of swing to everything he does. His songs are filled with everyday happenings, like songs like Viruses, Click on Romance, and My Finger Slipped, are filled with humorous lyrics and real-life everyday situations. Viruses garnered him a grand prize at the Great American Songwriting Contest. His songs are called Fun, Provocative, Fancy Free, and Spirited, while Jazz Weekly proclaimed, Rare are the male singers these days who are just as clever with the pen as the vocal sword. So, let's spill the tea with Ori Dagan. Welcome, Ori. Hello, thanks so much for having me on this. Well, this is going to be, I get the feel, this is going to be a fun, fun uh, interview because your songs are, I I listened to three of them, the ones that I, I did in the intro, I talked about in the intro, and uh, they are spectacular and, and, and so humorous. The tongue-in-cheek humor there is just uh, amazing. Thank um, you. Those songs, uh, were they all written around the same time? Let's see. My finger slipped, viruses, and clicked on romance. Yes, those songs were all written for my fourth recording, "Click Right Here," which uh, was a COVID project, actually. And um, so, yeah, they would. Well, let's talk about that because uh, the 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 feeling that I get is that jazz is dying off with uh with the boomer generation or or the next generation obviously not because you're not a boomer but with with people that are say in their teens and in their 20s uh are they do we still have that same pulse in the jazz genre well, I mean, speaking from a perspective of artistry and talent, I mean, it is just booming. And there's so many great young people on the scene right now in Toronto who are exploding with talent. And mm-hmm. so I don't know. I don't I don't see it like that. I think maybe what you're alluding to is that the music is a lot less mainstream than it was a long time ago. And, and yes, I would agree with that. Um, but at the same time, I don't know, like there's, I feel like there's a lot of potential for it to reach many, many ears. And I mean, look at, I mean, looking at the mainstream, I mean, we just had Samara Joy win Best New Artist at the Grammys. And so there are, there are young singers out there who are making a huge impact. And certainly, I mean, like I said, it's it's there's always going to be young people connecting to this music and finding a way to tell their story. So to your point about the standards, and we talked about this uh, before we w- were on the air, about what are the standards uh, going to be? You know, Beatles, you mentioned the Beatles and groups from the 60s. Uh, do you see those kinds of songs uh, being drawn into the jazz genre to be, um, you know, rearranged for for, for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. That's already happening. Absolutely. Um, any, any, that's, I guess the mark of a great song is, is taking something that's familiar and doing something new with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, certainly when it comes to the things that are considered jazz standards, you know, when it comes to, you know, summertime Gershwin or, Uh, I've Got You Under My Skin, Cole Porter, or My Favorite Things, Rodgers and Hammerstein. You know, those were the songs that were pop songs in the 1930s, 40s. So really, when you take pop tunes from now and rearrange them, you're that's that's true to the jazz tradition. And it's it's the mark of a really great song. Let's talk about your younger years as you were growing up and you were you're studying music 
and uh, you were you know playing more and more music, and you came out and announced that you were going to do this as a profession. What was the support like from from your family, like mom and dad? Did they look at you and say, "Ori, um, this might be a nice thing for you to do as a hobby"? That's exactly what they said. We'd really like you to find like a that, real like, job. Like literally, that's exactly what they said. Uh, my parents have been so incredible on my journey and they did start me off in music lessons when I was a kid and I did piano and I kind of got really sick of piano about 10 years later. It just, I mean, the repetition of it, doing the same thing all the time, I was, it was just not, not right. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. And then when I kind of got into jazz, I, I, I started to sing jazz. I, I, Ella Fitzgerald was my what do you, what do you call that um, drug of choice or or gateway drug? <laughs> Ella is called the gateway drug of jazz. The gateway by the way. drug to jazz, yeah, really? Yes, I've I've heard that. It's really true. She's made a lot of us into into singers. I really got the bug. So I remember when I told my parents about it, they were like, you know, it's great, but like just do it as a hobby and and get a real job or you know whatever that means and it wasn't until i i convinced them to come and see me in in a little club or whatever it was and they really understood like they god bless them because i really i i wasn't a very good singer at that time by any stretch but they they sensed that that it was really important to me and that this is what i wanted to do and and they've been really, really supportive. So I'm, I've been very lucky. Um, with you, Ori, was there ever a, a moment where you thought you might give this career up and as your parents uh, suggested, go find a real job? Yes, there was a, around 2005, six, something like that. I would already been doing jazz for about five or six years and I just got really frustrated. And I, I, I decided to quit and just focus on being a journalist you know I was I just said you know what I'll just write about music I'm giving this up and and it was the darkest nine months of my life and when I got back to the stage that's when I realized this is what I need to do this is my calling this is what I need to do in order to be happy and I I think really like it's important to do this kind of soul searching it's important to really follow your heart at the end of the day and and anyone who is an artist today is pretty much an artist because they have to create you have to have a need to create you can't really you wouldn't if you're doing this for any other reason like if it's for money first of all you, you're out of it by like three months and you're like what am i doing <laughs> but i mean i don't know i guess it's possible that people do this for ego or because they love being on stage or they love the attention or whatever. Uh, but I, but I think it, it, you won't last. Like you have to have a need to create and to reach people. Let's get into one of the songs that you wrote. This song won uh, Ori a grand prize in the John Lennon songwriting contest. Uh, the song is Going That Counts. Is and it's for Ella. Yeah, so, this. So this song, it's a duet with vocalist uh, Donovan Locke, and it's a, a tribute to Ella. But, but I'll let Ori tell the story after we hear the song. So here it is, "Going That Counts" by Ori Dagan. It's not where you come from; it's where you're going. It's not where you come from, it's where you're going, 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 going that counts, 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 going that counts. Black orphan girl, born in Virginia, boy she could win a million hearts, with a single song where there is love and inspiration, I just don't think that you can go wrong, go and go and go in the count. You come from now where you come from it is where, where you're going, going that counts skate a little little boo you move it do 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 Thank you. 
I quite obey? Why should it matter? Are we supposed to be humankind? Haters be like walking in the water. Why can't they open up their minds? It's the way you come from this way you go. That was Going That Counts by Ori Dagan. What was the inspiration for that song? Why uh, why dedicate a song to Ella Fitzgerald? Well, first of all, if it wasn't for Ella, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Because I, I Ella was the, the, the artist who really inspired me to sing. So it was Ella who really got me into jazz music. And I've always felt very, very closely connected with her spirit. And, and then later I got into her music and I started to sing along to her music. And especially, yes, her, her scat singing was really, you know, transcendent of genre. I mean, anyone who hears that, if you, if you listen to what she does on, on tracks like Blue Skies or How High the Moon or Take the A-Train, you know, the list goes on and on and on. The song Going That Counts talks a little bit about her survival using music, you know, and how music was her strength and music was her joy. And she overcame a lot in order to get there. You know, I mean, she grew up in poverty. She was an orphan. She also was let's face it i mean she was a young black girl who was not very attractive mm -hmm. and so thank god that chick webb the band leader saw fit to give her a chance and i mean it really is a miracle if you think about it that that happened most importantly she said a quote it isn't where you come from it's where you're going that counts and I was so inspired by that quote that I, I said, okay, I want to make this into a song in tribute to Ella. And the other quote that she said that is a lyric in the song is, "When where there is love and inspiration, I just don't think you can go wrong. And it's, it's really kept me going uh, in terms of inspiration because I really do strive, you know, to challenge myself as an artist and I've always looked at to her as the beacon of you know what the voice can do and so I, I really really I couldn't believe when I won this award this prestigious John Lennon songwriting contest uh, which this song touches on on racism and and how Ella overcame that like like so many African-American artists um, but I was really, really happy that this was the song that got this award because, like I said, if it wasn't for Ella, I would not be here. Here we go. This has been a fun interview, and now we get to put Ori on the spot. This is our rapid fire. Are you all Let's set? Let's do it. I'm okay. all set. One word answers. First thing that comes into your head. It's like family feud. It's like family feud. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Uh, soup. What's your favorite food to make? What's that one thing I make? Oh my God. I'm not much of a cook. Let's go with um, cucumber salad. New York City. A destination that's still on your bucket list. Rio de Janeiro. One word that describes you the best. Fun. Favorite movie. Uh, little Voice. Favorite desert island song. Not one of your own. Well, of course. Uh, sweet Georgia Brown. What's your nickname? Orcho. What's your guilty pleasure? Candy. Who's your hero? Ella. What's your partner's middle name? Andrea. When's your husband's birthday? December 22. Ooh, close one. <laughs> What's your anniversary date? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, August 22nd. <laughs> Don't look around. There's nobody to help you now, man. There's nobody to help you. There's nobody. August to 22nd. You. No, I got it. I got okay. It. Ding, ding, ding. You did well on the uh, lightning round. Here. <laughs> oh, man. 
that so was now rough. what what's coming up <laughs> what's coming up man what's coming up where are your shows uh uh where you are you've got concerts coming up you got gigs coming up uh, yeah new, yeah i do, I do. what have you got the last Saturday of February, that's February 24th, I'm going to be at the TIFF Lightbox building at the Luma restaurant uh, with a really casual, fun jazz gig that they, they're interested in, in having me there every month. So let's see how, how good this one goes. Um, I'm very excited about that. Oh, I'm, I'm in uh, Hamilton in on March 9th at the Royal Botanical Gardens at a, as part of a, the Wintertide Festival. And then in, in uh, March, I'm going to be going also to Quebec. I'll be in Terrebon on the 15th and then in St. Hyacinth on the 22nd. And then, um, yeah, so you go to, go to my website to check out where I am. I might have new shows there. It's uh, oridagan.com slash shows. You're a busy guy, and uh, <laughs> we wish you the best of luck in everything that's coming up. We have been in conversation with Ori Dagan. Ori, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me, David, and thank you for supporting and encouraging singer-songwriters. And uh, to all your listeners, share the link so more people know about this fantastic program. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ari.